What's up guys and gals, Brian Tonk here, and this is my Mac OS Big Sur review. And after using it for two months, this also will include the 11.1 update. I promise that, you know, I won't say it like that every time, just sometimes. And I waited to do this review until now just so I could really let the OS breathe instead of just doing a review on day one. There's always updates that come out. Plus, I really wanted to get a chance to use it on the M1 MacBook Pro as well. You see here, ooh, ooh, it's so gorgeous. So I really wanted to give you a complete assessment of it. But before I get to the review, big thanks to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. I've used this app for years. It's the all-in-one cleaning and optimization software for your Mac. If you're updating a Big Sur, before you do that, use Clean My Mac X. All right, so let's get into Mac OS Big Sur. And the first thing to do before you install it, I'm always gonna say this every time before every OS review, please back up your hard drive, whatever you need to do, do it by a backup drive. You can even use the time machine feature on the Mac to just constantly back up your computer to an external drive if you aren't already. Just back it up, that's your tech PSA, and if you don't, uh, good luck. Okay, now let's get to Big Sur, and that's what we're here for. You know, I'm approaching this upgrade review as someone who's already been using macOS Catalina on a MacBook Pro 16-inch Intel base, plus I'll also let you know how it is on the new M1 13-inch MacBook Pro, and many of you that have been on Catalina over the past year already went through this process of figuring out if your Crucial apps are compatible. You might have had some legacy apps that are 32-bit apps, and Catalina was the cutoff where all apps need to be 64-bit apps moving forward. Big Sur continues that 64-bit app requirement. Now, in my earlier review of Catalina, I said that if you have Crucial apps you can't go without that are still 32-bit apps, do not make the upgrade. No matter what OS you're using today, if that's still the case for you right now, do not upgrade to Big Sur. That's pretty straightforward. But there's many of you running Catalina for a while, and if you're completely happy with it, macOS Big Sur, last time, is going to be a familiar but refreshing update. Now, the first thing that really the first thing you'll notice after you install it is that they brought back the system startup sound. And this instantly feels like I'm back home. Like if you're a longtime Mac user, this is just a great touch. Now, if you don't want to hear it because you don't like to experience joy, well, you can go to the system preferences, then sound, and turn off the option to play sound on startup. But doing that just makes me a sad apple. <laughs> hmm. All right, well, that's really the only thing that feels retro or old school about Big Sur. This is an OS that is completely refreshed without changing anything that you know about the Mac OS before. And for me, it's really one of my favorite updates in a long time time. Now, the biggest thing you're going to notice is a fresh updated design that just feels modern and clean. Visually, Apple plays with even more transparency in Big Sur, whether it's the top menu bar or even drop downs from them. You have the floating dock or the sidebar in finder windows. It looks like a classy frosted glass that's never been used more than ever, and it feels like a modernized OS that's moving us forward. Even spacing, this makes the experience feel less cramped from the text in drop downs or even in the sidebar. You also have the minimalist use of icons at the top in familiar apps like Mail. Now the whole experience feels cleaner, but if you don't like it, you can make tweaks like changing the Mail app from icons to icons in text, something that my mama will appreciate. Now the menu bar feels completely new and it's clearly taking cues from iOS to bring a more similar experience to the Mac. Look at what they've done with preferences. You can change on the fly things like sound, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi. You even got your own control center now in the menu bar. Come on, that's straight from iOS and you have quick access to change some of the settings all in one place here. You have the notifications you're used to and widgets are pieces of iOS's DNA now built into the macOS notification center. They did originally debut in macOS Tiger with dashboard and that looked a lot different, but they're now cleaner, they're more uniform and better organized. I just think it looks awesome without messing up any of its functionality. And you can customize your widgets just like in iOS. You can pick and choose the size of widget you want, move them around to your liking, shift them in different spots. I just love everything that they've done here. They've even added Apple News widgets in Big Sur 11.1 for the top stories, or you can create a widget from your favorite news topic as well. There's new updated icons for your hard drive, connected drives, and folders. It is subtle, but I think it's an impactful change. New system sounds are everywhere from copying a file or moving a file, throwing something away in the trash, and then emptying the trash, 
everything about Big Sur now looks, feels, and sounds brand new. Now, if we go to the bottom of the desktop, we have to talk about that floating dock and Apple touted how they've made all new icons for their apps. Now, from the beginning, I said that, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the revamped rounded corner app icons straight out of iOS. Even some of the icons like mail, FaceTime, or messages, to me, they just have too much shading that makes them look more 90s than that cleaner flat aesthetic of iOS and the 2020s. I'm sorry, but someone had to say it and that still hasn't changed in over two months, especially when you have most third-party apps with icons that don't use these rounded corners versus Apple's apps. It looks like kind of a random mix and that might be my biggest gripe with Big Sur and it's such a small complaint, but you know, you do look at these every day. Even some of Apple's own app icons need refreshing and that's easily something that they could change in the future. Think about this, Apple, they changed the battery image in the battery preferences after fans criticized the original from an early build in Big Sur. So saying Apple has a passionate following is an understatement and Apple can change this if they want. Now, since we're also talking about the cosmetics of Big Sur, when you look at it, come on now, this is an OS that is just begging to be touched, right? You got the new app icons, they are iOS icons. Really, squares with rounded corners for me to touch on. Control center sliders, though those are made for my fingers too, right? The toggles for preferences and the menu bar, they're just all screaming for me to touch them, for me to slide them. And this is either Apple's biggest tell that they're closer than ever to finally bringing a touchscreen to Mac OS, or it's the biggest tease they have ever done. You know, I've been asking for a basic touchscreen functionality on their MacBook line for years, and I really don't need anything complex. Just give me basic scrolling, give me some pinch and zoom, and app selection. It's all here to do because I love everything they've done to refresh Big Sur, but the next evolution to me, and the one thing to really kind of take this OS up even another level is to finally bring touchscreen hardware support and it is right in front of us. Hey Apple, if your app icons look like this, bring me touch, please. So that's what I'm waiting and hoping for. Now I upgraded a Big Sur with a fully loaded MacBook Pro 16 inch that was previously running Catalina and the upgrade went smoothly for me. I was actually surprised that after doing it, my Mac has felt smoother than before if that makes sense. And I don't know if it's my mind tricking me or it's the placebo effect when you put in a new OS, but Big Sur, it just runs like a charm on my Intel base 16 inch. It hasn't stopped the loud fans from mine of going off. I mean, that stayed the same. I also did a clean install on a 13 inch Intel MacBook Pro that I had available to use from Apple and then a preloaded M1 MacBook Pro that came with Big Sur. The M1 is obviously a faster machine and everything about it, even minimizing windows appears slightly smoother. I showed this off in one of my M1 videos, but it's still worth showing again. I have the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro and the previous gen Intel MacBook Pro 13 inch. And these are totally different processors. So this isn't comparing apples to apples, even though they are both apples. So let's just fire them up. Now the Intel Pro starts with the lead, but is it gonna keep it? Well, we can see here, the M1 is gaining on it. The M1 just passed it up. And there's the M1 login screen at about 17 seconds and the Intel MacBook Pro shows up around 23 seconds with Mac OS Big Sur. So the M1 has the advantage. Okay, let's do a shutdown because some of you are curious about this too. All apps have already been closed here. We hit shutdown and the M1 is instant, basically one second, and the Intel 13 inch and my 16 inch even was around six to seven seconds. So you're getting faster startup and shutdown with Big Sur, but really it's probably more the M1 because this is like an iPhone processor in the Mac and then some. We also have the new M1's instant wake feature running on Big Sur and it does wake it up instantly. It should because again, it's like an iPhone processor, but it doesn't make a meaningful difference to me because by the time you open up your laptop wide enough to use it, the screen is already on. On the previous gen Intel Mac, I open it up in one, two, and the screen is on. On the new M1, I'll open it and it's on, but I get to the screen where it's usable by that same count, one, two. So it's instant. It absolutely is, but it didn't make a difference or save me time where I felt like I gained precious work time. So it's a nice to have, I guess, but not really a game changer. You might say that those are all advantages of the M1 because they kind of are, but I wanted to show them with Big Sur. But it hopefully answers your questions about how well does the M1 actually perform with Big Sur. And out of all the Macs I've been able to use it on, it runs the best on the M1 chip 13 inch MacBook Pro. And this is a model that only had eight gigs of RAM in the review unit that I used. 
Now, other new changes. Safari has been revamped and I've used it to take advantage of its power efficiency, specifically on the M1 with Big Sur. That never used to matter to me and maybe it shouldn't because the battery life on here is so good, but Safari runs perfectly fine for me on the M1 and so did Chrome, which has released an M1 optimized version of their browser as well. Apple claims it's 50% faster than Chrome and you'll get up to an hour more of juice web browsing using Safari versus Chrome or Firefox and up to three more hours of video playback using Safari versus Chrome and Firefox. Now in the battery settings, it always shows you what apps are using significant energy. The top one for me is always Chrome. And I'll be honest, it's hard to say just how much of a difference it makes because I do so much different type of work and the battery life is already so impressive here at up to 20 hours. It's just really hard to determine how much of an impact using Safari makes because the battery life is already so good. Like I can legit get through pretty much two days without charging my laptop and when I use it in doses, we're talking three to four days easy. A quick note here in 11.1, Safari users can now use Ecosia as their default search engine and it uses its ad revenue to help plant trees around the world. Apple always talks about being green. Well, Safari can now support efforts like Ecosia's now. There's also other Big Sur additions. Messages gets a revamp like iOS messages and includes everything from pinning to conversation to inline replies, changing a group photo. It's really everything you expect on iOS messages is now in Big Sur's messages, so it's pretty much the same experience and syncs across the ecosystem. Maps, it gets an update, but I don't really use maps at all on the desktop. Apple Maps is a legit map service now, and I do use it when I'm walking around in cities like New York for directions on my Apple Watch. It gives me those notifications when it turn, like I love that, but beyond that, I'm not really using it that much. Big Sur's maps add new guide recommendations for the different cities you're visiting. There's this great one to check out here. It's some of the murals in the Los Angeles area to honor the passing of the legend Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi. So rest in peace to them and all the people involved in that tragic crash. You can also create your own guides too. And the look around feature still to me, a smoother and better experience than Google Maps, but it's just a habit for me to use Google Maps first. Since Big Sur has been out for two months now, Apple released the macOS Big Sur 11.1 update that brought some new key improvements. The biggest one was my biggest gripe about Big Sur on an M1 Mac. It now has the ability to display iPhone and iPad apps full screen in landscape or portrait mode. You couldn't do that before, believe it or not. And I used to only be able to watch HBO Max through the app or play Among Us in this like small box that didn't fill out the full screen. Well, not anymore. It's full screen now. And that's a change that I asked for and they did it in 11.1. Thank you. Now 11.1 also supports Apple AirPods Max over ear headphones. That's something we expected to happen, but didn't initially. I will say handoff and switching between iOS and iPadOS devices is a lot smoother and works how I expect, but it's not as consistent once I get the Mac involved. It almost always prioritizes my iPhone first and I'll manually have to switch it to my Mac when I play audio, but between iPhone and iPad, it works great. That's what we expect, but it's just not as consistent with my Mac. Maybe it's a little user error, but I'm not the only person who's experienced this. I think it's still a killer feature, but I'm hoping it can get smoothed out in a future update to first pair to the device actively being used. Now in 11.1, the Apple TV app gets better organization with a dedicated Apple TV Plus tab where you can instantly find Apple's original content instead of hunting for it by scrolling down where it's mixed in with other content in the past. You can also browse by specific categories for content and search has been enhanced with the most relevant matches for you. But when I type in the word Marvel, I expected it to show more pieces of Marvel content, really like the whole library, but it doesn't. And since I haven't traveled much, I haven't used the app that much. Now, a couple other features to bring up. Mac OS Big Sur 11.1 supports editing the Apple Pro Raw DNG file format on the Photos app. And it's one of the few apps that lets you do it properly right now. Plus, I mentioned the Apple News widgets in the Notification Center earlier. That's also new to 11.1 as well. There's also some other fixes and tweaks, but I really wanted to point out some of the big ones. But for me, Mac OS Big Sur 11.1 is not only one of the best looking refreshes in a long time, but it also runs great. I've enjoyed using it on both an Intel-based MacBook Pro and an Apple M1 MacBook Pro. I think it's an absolutely rock solid OS upgrade. It's one of Apple's best in a while. And yeah, the M1 helps too. I feel like once I use it on the M1 and then I come back to an Intel machine, 
it kind of feels like you're going back in time just because of how snappy and smooth and responsive it is. But the main issues you'll have is if you're using crucial 32-bit apps and haven't found a replacement, don't upgrade yet. If you use specific plugins for your media apps that may not be compatible yet, you're gonna need to check with your developer before you jump over, but don't upgrade until then. And if you're on an M1 based Mac, software like the complete Adobe suite still doesn't have a native version for the M1. So don't expect it'll run exactly the same, even if it runs fine in Big Sur on an Intel machine. It can run decently, but there's some stuff that doesn't translate as well overall it is still more reliable on an Intel machine until we get official updates for the M1 versions of the Adobe suite that are released. And those are to me like the three big caveats where I would say you might wanna slow your roll, but there's plenty of users that use their machines just for email, web browsing, word processing, or spreadsheets with Microsoft Office. You're completely good to upgrade. If you're using Final Cut, the Affinity Suite, and Pixelmator Pro, there's just so many other apps out there that are working for you. It's also worth upgrading for you too. If you're using macOS Catalina and you have been for a while, it's pretty much a no-brainer to upgrade. Like I've loved every bit of macOS Big Sur and two months in with all the improvements made and then 11.1 on top of that, this is an OS that feels fresh, fast, and new. It hasn't experienced any major bugs that are affecting people widespread up to this point. And in case if you were wondering, here's also a list of compatible Macs that support upgrading to macOS Big Sur right now. So check those out. And really for me, macOS Catalina was the foundation, right? But Big Sur has just refined the experience and added familiar hooks and features that bring it even closer together with iOS. I'm absolutely loving it and it's worth upgrading to it if this makes sense for you. Thanks again to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. No matter how great and pretty dang flawless macOS may seem, it can also be guilty of multiple issues and vulnerabilities. If you're gonna update to Big Sur, before you do that, Clean up your Mac by using Clean My Mac X. It's the all-in-one cleaning and optimizing software for your Mac that's simple and user-friendly and can work wonders on my Mac and yours. The app's most popular feature is the Smart Scan. With one click, it examines your system for system log files and user cache that is no longer needed. Smart Scan also does a quick malware check and runs some optimization tasks to speed up your Mac and it will only take a few seconds. Clean My Mac also has the ability to handle all performance draining processes on your Mac and its optimization has always been a lot more straightforward than macOS's built-in activity monitor. It also has powerful protection and with malware removal, you can scan your Mac for viruses, adware, or cryptocurrency miners and remove them instantly. Big Sur is just over 12 gigs, so using these tools can help you free up space before you download the OS. Try Clean My Mac X for free. Just use the link in the description. I've used it for years. And if you like the product, you can upgrade for only $35 annually. All right, thanks so much for watching this video, everybody. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. Plus, if you want more of that Apple goodness, check out my weekly Apple Bits XL podcast. That's really a deep dive into the latest stories with special guests. So take care, everybody. Mac was big, sir. It's the real deal. I'll see you next time. Peace and love.